can't bring that into the gymnasium. I'll be the laughing stock of the whole school. Hello, Charlie Brown. Why the sad face? Linus, I can't do anything right. Look at my tree. It is the saddest looking tree I've ever seen. It's not so bad, Charlie Brown. All it needs is a little love. Linus, I have been trying to get into the Christmas spirit. I, th I thought if I found a perfect tree, it would do it. Well, Charlie Brown, the Christmas spirit can't be found in a tree, or in special lights, or even in Christmas presents. Presents? Good grief. I haven't even started shopping yet. I've been working so hard to put to pull together our, our Christmas special at, at school. Well, Charlie Brown, you need to slow down. Catch your breath. I think you're trying too hard. The pageant will work out if everyone does their part. That's the problem, Linus. It's not coming together. Nobody seems to have the Christmas spirit. Schroeder is so busy playing classical music instead of Christmas carols. Sally is pouting because she gets to play a shepherd. Peppermint Patty will not wear a king's crown. Snoopy insists on sleeping in the manger. And Lucy, I, Lucy, she just wants to be the star of the Christmas special. Oh, is that all, Charlie Brown? I think you need to remind everyone what Christmas is really all about. That's the best way to get into the Christmas spirit. Are you talking about presents again, Linus? I can't go out and, and, and buy presents. I, it would cost me ten dollars. That's almost my whole year's uh, allowance. I'm not talking about presents, Charlie Brown. I'm talking about presents. <laughs> Christmas is all about God's presence. It reminds us just how much God loves us. He came to be with us on Christmas. I heard that, Linus, but I just can't feel him right now. What do I need to do to get into the Christmas spirit and, and, and feel God's presence? You need to stop running around and just pause and listen. That's what happened on the first Christmas. They have it right here in God's word. It tells the story. We read this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields at night, keeping watch over their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for all the people, and he is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened and the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told and what they had seen in this child. And all that heard it were amazed by these things. Charlie Brown, that's the real meaning of Christmas. That's what it's all about. And when you recognize that, suddenly everything begins to make sense. God's love lights up the skies and your heart, too. Love, that's what Christmas is all about. Thanks, Linus. I'm beginning to feel it now. And, and, and look at this. Look what love can do to a Christmas tree. <gasps> It can change it into something beautiful. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Merry Christmas to you, Linus. Now let's go and make it the best pageant ever. There we go. Let's go.
Okay, so now we are going to do a mini hymn sing, first verses only. Um, and so we'll start on page 171 with Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and then proceed down the list as they're listed in the bulletin. Gracious God, we thank you for these gifts, for the blessings you've bestowed upon us, and of course, the most wonderful gift of all, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless gift and giver this day as we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing now. We're going to do a uh, mini hymn sing. We'll take the offering. There we go. May it be blessed even as we have said. Amen. Okay, there we go. That's, I'm going to put it right here. We're going to sing now a few hymns of the season. We're going to sing one verse each of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, The First Noel, and Away in a Manger.
that's how Jesus Christ was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before they married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. All this took place to fulfill the Lord's promise through his prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. At this time, Emperor Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire, and everyone went to his own city to be registered. So Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and travel into Judea to Bethlehem, which is also known as the town of David. He went there to register with Mary. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That night, there were shepherds living out in the fields near Bethlehem, keeping watch over their sheep. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Now after Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem, some wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem and asked, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The star they had seen in the east appeared again. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, and the star led the wise men to the place where the child was. As they arrived, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell to the ground and worshiped Jesus. Then opening their treasures, the wise men presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so Christ the Savior was born. He entered the world not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for you. We can't hear that story enough times. You know, so often in the midst of this season, we, we focus on other things. Our eyes are taken off of the cradle the manger in Bethlehem. And so today we remember, and it's because of what happened that day long ago that we can gather together in the spirit of prayer and know that God hears our prayers. As we come together today, we want to think of those who are hurting. For some, the holidays will feel a little hollow this year because they've lost loved ones. Um, this past week, um, my Aunt Deborah passed away, my dad's youngest sister, and so I met with my cousin, and with uh, Deb's husband, Barney, and uh, are planning a service. And so it's a sad time in their house. Also, I heard this morning that uh, Cheryl Stedman's brother, Billy James, passed away. She'd been asking for prayers for him. Some of you remember Cheryl. I think she and her husband, Earl, were, were active members here for a number of years. And so we think of Cheryl. She watches our broadcasts on Facebook. And so we think of Cheryl, we think of uh, Billy's family as well as we gather this day. We want to lift up also uh, friends of Jim and Patty Collins, uh, Judy and Joseph Sanator. Uh, Joseph is suffering from viral meningitis and, uh, and really struggling and under physician's care. And so we pray for their family and we pray for healing and we pray for God's presence there. We think of Kim Allen a good friend of uh, another one of our members. Uh, we think of him. Uh, we think of um, uh, Kim Allen today, and we think and we pray God to bring healing to her. I want to lift up Lynn. It's nice to have Lynn back. Uh, she was battling pneumonia and the flu, and so we welcome her back, and we pray that she continues to get stronger every day. 
Uh, she ministers to the children up at Cheriho and uh, also uh, to all of us. We think of Valerie LaPointe um, losing her mom recently. We think of Deb Peterson losing her dad. It's been a tough time for many of our families. We think of the Payne family. Um, they have been suffering with uh, the, the flu, Eva and her boys, and so we think of them and we pray for healing. Randy Sargent, who is back with us, Randy had knee surgery, and uh, we love to see him as he recuperates. We think of Olive Resendez in our prayer as she is uh, dealing, she and her parents, with uh, the diagnosis of Crohn's disease. I want to think also of Vicki Keene's brother in our continuing plan, pr prayers. I want to think of Don Plant and Ray Deptoski, both of them having some back issues, and so we pray that uh, their backs will be strengthened. And Tom Pixton, we think of, as he's battling cancer. Uh, there are others, too. I heard from Arthur Burton. Arthur had to go back in for some more uh, medical treatments, and so we pray for Arthur's healing. Um, we know that uh, he was in a lot of pain, but it was great to see him and Jessica and the family last week. Are there others that we want to think of in our prayers as we come together today? Yes, Linda. Well, great. We, we give up uh, a, a word of praise for your grandson-in-law as he came through that surgery. It was, I know it was a very tricky surgery, and we pray for healing now for him. Yes, we think also of your Aunt Winnie. Winnie Hamilton, we know that uh, uh, she's been struggling a little bit with her health in recent days, and so we pray for her. Others we want to think of. Yes, Jerry. Uh, we, we lift up your, Jerry's daughter-in-law's father who passed away. We, we commend him to God's keeping, and we pray for the family as they mourn this loss so close to Christmas. Yeah, others we want to think of. Yes, yes, Jonathan. Well, great. Well, I think my battery died. Oh, it's good. Okay, good. Jonathan starts a new job tomorrow, and so we pray that that's a good one. Yes, Don. Well, we think of Nicole, a beautiful baby boy, your niece, and uh, we just praise God for that. It's nice to see new life in all of this, especially at Christmas. Yes, any others? Yes, Kay. Bob Johnson's 92nd birthday, and also Bob and Diane have an anniversary today. That's great. Both of them have been battling the flu and uh, they're hoping to make it here today. But, uh, you know, Bob's a smart man. Getting married on his birthday, it's hard to forget your anniversary, you know, because they'll say happy birthday and they said, oh yeah, it's also our anniversary. That's a really smart man. But, uh, well, happy birthday. We know that uh, they watch us when they're not here on the Facebook Live. And so uh, we, we pray for your healing, Bob and Diane, and we also pray and celebrate your birthday and anniversary. Any others? Pastor, one more. Uh, Alice Lemon will be 101 on Friday. Alice Bliven, 101 years old uh, this Christmas time uh, this week, and so we rejoice with her, 101. Uh, and uh, Jerry. We're uh, praying for Tony Perone as he goes for a test tomorrow. We're praying for good news and a good report back from the doctor. Yeah. Well, let us join together these prayers and any others that you might have, and let's lift them up to the Lord. We're going to continue in that spirit of prayer. I invite you just in the next moment, if you have any concerns or any joys, just to share that with the Lord. He has promised to be with us, and it is in our prayers that he visits us. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we rejoice as we celebrate the birth of your Son. Lord, Christmas time offers this, this fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit as we focus on the manger and focus on who Jesus really is. Oh Lord, I'm not sure if the shepherds really understood or even the wise men, 
I'm not sure if Mary and Joseph understood the full extent of who this child was and what he was to become. They know that he was the anointed one, he was the gift of God, that he was the promised Messiah that had long been awaited for, but even so, maybe it was hard for them all to grasp. But Lord, today we have no excuse, we know who he is, we know that he was the gift showing God's love, the hope that we have in forgiveness and new life as he gave his life for us. Lord, bless us today as we remember and celebrate. Oh Lord, even as we gather together, Lord, we know that there are many within our congregation who have lost loved ones in recent days, recent weeks, even recent months. And so Lord, this can be a difficult holiday for that reason. And yet we rejoice because it was through Christ that we have the hope of a joyful reunion one day. Oh Lord, we thank you for the faith which points us in that direction. Oh Lord, we ask you to be with those who are hurting, those who are suffering at this time of the year. You've heard many of their names lifted up, friends and family, some of us who are gathered here, who are looking for healing, who are looking for encouragement, or looking for assurance, Lord. Oh Lord, may the words that were spoken to Mary also give us comfort today. Do not be afraid. For you have found favor with the Lord. We know, Lord, that those were directed at Mary. And yet, Lord, for each of us who trust in Christ, those words come home to us. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with the Lord. Oh, Lord, we live with that favor. We live with that grace as we follow you through these days. Oh, Lord, we pray that in this most holy season, that others, too, who do not know of your love, will be able to turn away from the bright lights and once again focus on the manger so that they too might have the joy that we have to know the love of God. Oh Lord, hear our prayers today, the spoken and unspoken prayers as we gather together as a church family. Hear us now as we lift up the words of our congregational prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for the peace that comes from knowing you. Give us the hope and the joy that cannot be taken away by circumstance. Let love guide our footsteps through this Advent season as we prepare our hearts for your presence here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Cottage, and a girl named Mary was in it. And an angel appeared. Mary said, What are you doing here? The, and the angel said, I'm here to tell you that, uh, that you're going to grow a little baby that's named Jesus. Mary went to Joseph and said, Guess what? We're going to marry a baby. No. Did I say we were going to marry? <laughs> I did not mean that. No. So Mary goes to Joseph and says, guess what? We're going to have a, we're going to have a baby that God put in me. And his name is Jesus. And Joseph said, okay, so let's go to Bethlehem and you can ride a, a donkey and I'll walk and help you ride it. Mary and Joseph have been traveling a long way. They went to the hotel and they knocked on the door and the man said, I'm sorry, there's no room for you. I'll, I'll try to find somewhere else for you guys to, to stay. And Joseph said, okay, where would that be? Well, wherever that might be, I'll try to find you a place that would be open and snuggly for the new baby. And Mary said, wherever you can find a place that is comfortable for the baby and me and Joseph will sh sure be fine. So they went and found one. Mary said, this looks good. We'll just have the baby here. I hope there's going to be a place for 
us to to make sure the baby gets born good. I think uh, they got most of that right. <laughs> George is going to share a little bit more about that story that precedes that adventure. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even as Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So be the word of the Lord. This morning, the choir is going to sing the anthem, Mary, Did You Know?
Mary, did you know? You know, sometimes when we talk about these stories, there is this question about Jesus. How much did he know he was the Son of God? He was God incarnate. Did he know that he was born to die? We tend to take that for granted, and and I think that's also true for Mary, the mother of Jesus. Did she know what was going to come? Did she know that Jesus would, would be able to do all these things, that he had come to die, that he had come to save us from our sins, that he was truly filled with that spirit of God because he was God? I love that line in there that did you know that when you kissed your baby, you were kissing the face of God? You know, if you've had a baby in your life, we have a grandchild, others have grandchildren here, and and they are so beautiful and so precious to hold them and to kiss them. And you wonder, did Mary know exactly what she had in that child? We heard several of the scriptures, and again, I think it's so important for us as the church to hear these stories again and again and to remind ourselves of the truth and the reason we celebrate. Just as Charlie Brown can get caught up in all the festivities and all the expectations, we too find ourselves in that position sometimes until our focus is brought back to the reason to that child in the manger. And so we heard the story today about Mary. An angel appears to you and says, the Lord is with you and has found favor with you. That's pretty cool, but here's the problem. Angels don't just appear to people. It has to be something extraordinary for that to happen. And no wonder Mary is taken aback and the angel has to tell her, do not be afraid. I have good news. The Lord has found favor with you. The Lord has looked upon you, and He is going to give you a gift like no other gift. Uh, She's just a young girl, though, the story tells us, a teenager maybe, and she's not wealthy or a person of great influence. She's simply someone who was faithful to God, who God chose for this role. I imagine that her first question was this when the angel came, why me, who am I, I'm just a nobody. The truth is, though, that God chooses nobodies all the time. He chooses those people like Mary who simply love Him and have a heart to serve Him. He chooses us, maybe not to the extent that He chose Mary, but like Mary, in that He chooses us to do the things that may have a lasting impact on the people all around us. You know Mary's story. The angel tells her she's going to have a baby, and it's not just any baby. This is going to be the Messiah, the Son of God. And she must have been overwhelmed. She says, I'm just a girl. But it's amazing what God can do. I read the story of a little boy that came home from Sunday school one day and his mother asked him what he learned in in the Sunday school lesson. And the little boy said, well, that he learned about this man named Moses. And he was leading some of his people away from the Egyptians and the Egyptians were chasing them. And as they were being chased, they came to a huge sea. And Moses had his men build a bridge across the sea so that all the people could cross over the bridge. The engineers came out, the the manufacturers, the the construction crews came out, and they built this huge bridge. And and soon they were able to cross over. And Moses called for airstrikes and planes to blow up the bridge so that the Egyptians couldn't follow them and capture them. And the mother looked at him, and she asked the boy if that was really what the teacher taught him in Sunday school. And he said, no, that's not what she said, but you'd never believe the story she told us. (laughs) You see, God does amazing and unbelievable things. And some of us have experienced those things in our lives as we have seen miracles happen. And maybe not just the classical miracle of someone being healed from sickness, but we've seen lives changed. We've seen futures that were in doubt turn around. And Mary's story is another one of those stories 
that tells of the amazing things that God can do that are so hard to believe. It's a fulfillment of scriptural prophecies, her story. Isaiah declares, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. And there it was. There are so many promises and prophecies in the Old Testament that point to this exact moment. Sometimes you wonder how, if you are a student of the Old Testament, of the Hebrew Scriptures, how you could have missed this moment. But it was all there. All there. And the way that Mary responded to God's call is such an example of faith. She was young and scared to death. Her future was all in front of her. She was betrothed, getting ready to get married. She was going to raise a family. And she was going to live the life that most people live. Yet the angel Gabriel speaks to her. And says, we've got something special planned for your life. The Lord is with you. He's found favor with you, so do not be afraid. What's going to happen now is going to be a great thing for all the world. Mary's response was powerful and clear. It's a response of a true follower of God, a person who hears the word of God and acts on it. Mary says, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. She didn't know the consequences of her choice at the time. And, and so often when we decide to follow Jesus, we don't know the consequences of what we will have to go through in the future. Sometimes there are great blessings that come and sometimes there's great hardship. A few weeks ago, we noticed and remembered the persecuted Christians. There are places in this world where when you say yes to Jesus, it may mean death. It may mean that your life is altered forever by imprisonment. We never know what it means to say yes to Jesus. And yet he calls us, nonetheless, he calls us to a life of faithfulness and truth. You know, Mary was not promised a smooth path because she said yes to God. She was only reassured that God was with her and that she didn't need to be afraid. Think about the impact that Mary's decision had on the world. As Mary experienced the pains of childbirth, did she wonder If she had done the right thing, do you think she would return, rerun the angel's words for her mind as time went by and different events occurred? The Lord is with you. You know, sometimes we have to say that when we're going through a challenging time in our lives, when it seems like everything turns upside down and and the future is uncertain, we need to remind ourselves, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me is with me. Because the truth is is that if we don't know that he's with us, if we don't feel that, then life can be difficult, more difficult than it needs to be. I love that song, Mary, Did You Know? Actually, we're at a show last night and a woman sang it beautifully, just as our choir did. It's one of the most popular Christmas songs of all time. Mary, did you know? It raises a lot of questions that we might have if we were there, if we were in Mary's inner circle, if we were confidant to her. The truth is that even with the message that the angels delivered, she didn't know that one day this babe would grow up and walk on water. She didn't know that he had the power within him so that the blind would see, the deaf would hear, and the dead would live again. She didn't know that. I I believe that. All she knew was that he was the son of God, that he was the child of promise, and he'd come to save us from the chains of sin and death. And that was enough for her, we're told. We're told that Mary was a woman who pondered these things in her heart, a woman who devoted to prayer and attentive to God as he's working in the world. And so I'm sure that as that child grew up, and the scriptures don't tell us a lot about his youth, but there were moments when she just watched and wondered what was going to happen, how he would live out the promise that was within him. The point is this, though, as we come to this Christmas. Just as God has called Mary, God is calling you and me to many different things as well. We may not be called to bear the Son of God, and yet we are called to bear the message 
that the Son of God gives all of us the hope that this world so desperately needs. We are called to different occupations, volunteer opportunities. We're called to raising our families and being out in the community. And some of what God is calling us to may still be a mystery. We don't know what the future will hold. We don't know what God will do with our simple acts as we step out in faith. But we simply need to say yes, like Mary did, and trust God to give us the strength to carry through. Charles Schultz was the creator of the Peanuts comic strip. As a young boy, he, he, was, he, he was really enamored with this whole idea of being a cartoonist. He kind of wanted to be one, and, and as he grew up, he, he took little opportunities here and there. He went off to fight in World War II, and after he had his opportunity to begin to draw and illustrate, Charles Schultz was also a Christian. And so he wanted his work to be different in the sense that it would reflect a different way of life, a different way of understanding, maybe seeing the world through children's eyes and also giving some of those themes. He got his wish and his column was originally published in 1950. And throughout his career, he often injected his Christian themes into his comic strips, we're told that more than 560 of his nearly 18,000 strips contained a religious or theological reference. 560 of 18,000. It doesn't really seem like a lot, but those are direct correlations. But think about this. When you think about Charlie Brown, what is the thing you think about most? It's that Lucy with the football, and as Charlie Brown finally gives her another chance, he's going to kick it, and she pulls it out from him. You know how many times that was referenced in his scripts? 61. So when you say 61 verses 560, you know that it was there. He reserved, he reserved this opportunity within his work to share a Christian message. Charlie Schultz says this, I preach in these cartoons and I reserve the same rights to say what I want as the minister does in the pulpit. This was his pulpit to talk about what was right and good. Nowhere is that more evident than in that scene from a Charlie Brown Christmas special. While everyone was in an uproar and squawking about Christmas, Schultz brings the whole story into focus as he has Linus come out and share the true meaning of Christmas right out of the Scriptures. You know, and that day and time, the, the sponsors, the, the, the station, CBS said, no, we don't want any part of that. We don't want to get into that religion thing. And Charles Schultz said, if we don't have that segment, then the show does not go on. And he got his way. And it's become a classic. In almost every home, that story is played again, and the message of the birth of Christ is shared pointing once again to the true meaning of Christmas. Christ in the manger. The testimony of a little boy in a comic strip makes it real. God does all of this, and He does it every day in your life and my life. This Christmas, we come to the manger again, and God is calling us to step out in faith, to not be afraid, to trust Him, and simply live life faithfully. We're called to be true and honest, loving and compassionate. We're called to stand up for what is right and to share what we know about the love of God. For that message came to us on a silent night, in a lowly stable, born to a young couple, a babe laid in a manger for all the world to see. No one knew that one day he'd walk on water or that he'd heal the sick and make the lame to walk. No one knew, no one knew that he would become the Lamb of God and give his life to deliver all of us from sin. But now we do know. And so we're called to share the story in whatever way we can. There's only a week till Christmas, but I challenge you to find some way to share that message with the people in your community, in your circle, in your family. Share that story in whatever way you can, whether it's by pointing them to a cartoon or by simply opening the Bible 
and sharing that story again? Will you answer that challenge? The night was still. The night is still waiting for you and me. So let's take this opportunity as we come to Christmas 2022. Step out of the chaos and point the way to Christ.